let us understand some of the terminology of linear programming. Let me take a hypothetical case just in order to understand these terms in an easier manner. Let's say you want to buy a car. Your requirement is to have the car within a budget of 20,000 US dollars. So you want to buy a car budget is less than or equal to 20,000 US dollars and you also think that the car should have a mileage of at least 30 miles per gallon so mileage should be greater than or equal to 30 miles per gallon and so the question in your mind is which car should you buy in order to maximize the value the value means the maximum return in terms of budget budget being lowest and mileage being the highest so which car should you buy in order to maximize the value that you get out of the car so if we take this example one part of this example says which car should you buy so this is the decision variable so decision variables are the unknowns which need to be determined from the solution so we want to determine which car should you buy so that becomes the decision variable some other examples of decision variable could be finding the quantities of products to be produced for example suppose you are the owner of a manufacturing company and you manufacture two different models of mobile phones so you want to decide which product or which model out of the two should be manufactured in what quantity to be able to maximize your profit similarly in case of a diet mix the decision variables would be the quantity of different foods that you want to decide so decision variables are the unknowns to be determined from the solution now again let's go back to this example so in this example we said that our budget is 20,000 US dollars so we want to spend at the most 20,000 US dollars so we can spend 16,000 US dollars 17,000 US dollars but not 21,000 US dollars and again the mileage has to be more than 30 miles per gallon so mileage can be 31 32 and so on but it cannot be 28 or 29 so these two factors here these represent the constraints so a constraint represents the mathematical equation of the limitations imposed by the problem characteristics the constraints also define the limits within which a solution to the problem must be found so constraints represent 
mathematical equation of the limitations imposed by the problem. Now coming back to the example that we have. So we were saying that which car should you buy in order to maximize the value. So we want to buy the car in such a way that the value is maximized. So this becomes our objective function. So this is the objective of the whole problem. So in other terms, an objective function represents the mathematical equation of the major goals of the system in terms of unknowns called decision variables. So of course the decision variable which was which car needs to be bought has the objective function of maximizing the value. So the objective function has to be in terms of the decision variables. So objective function represents the mathematical equation of the major goals of the system in terms of unknowns called decision variables. So in other terms if you want to understand the objective function suppose our decision variables are x and y and the objective function could be p which is profit is equal to 5x plus 6y. So this could be the objective function. So if you look at this, the objective function is expressed in terms of the decision variables which is x and y. So that is what this definition is saying here. Generally the objective function in linear programming is of the optimization type. It can be maximizing the profit or minimizing the cost. So coming back to the example that we were discussing. So you want to buy a car, budget is less than or equal to $20,000, mileage should be greater than or equal to 30 miles per gallon and you want to decide which car should you buy in order to maximize the value. So with this objective in mind you go to the market. You look at various cars with the dealers and you start preparing a list of the available cars. So the first car that you see say this is a Sonata. The price is 18,000 US dollars and the mileage is 28 miles per gallon. Then you go to a second dealer and here you see a Camry. This has a price of 22,000 US dollars and a mileage of 25 miles per gallon. 
Then the third car you see is a Corolla. And say the price was 16,000 US dollars and mileage was 35 miles per gallon. And the fourth car that you see is a Honda Civic. Say the price is 16,000 US dollars and the mileage is 32 miles per gallon. Okay, so with this data, now you want to analyze which of these cars meets your constraints. So you have two constraints, budget should be less than 20,000 US dollars and mileage should be greater than 30 miles per gallon. So let's see. So for Sonata, the price is 18,000 US dollars, which definitely meets our budget. So let me note down the constraints here for ease of understanding. So budget should be less than or equal to 20,000 US dollars and mileage should be greater than or equal to 30 miles per gallon. So the first car, Sonata. So the price is 18,000 US dollars. So this meets the first constraint that is should be less than 20,000 US dollars. So this is good. Mileage is 28 miles per gallon, which does not meet our second constraint. So this doesn't meet the constraint. Now, since this car does not meet all the constraints, we definitely cannot consider this car for our selection. The next car, that is Camry. Price is 22,000 US dollars which is more than 20,000 US dollars. So this does not meet our constraint. And the mileage is 25 miles per gallon, which again doesn't meet our mileage constraint. So this car also cannot be selected for comparison. The next car is Corolla. Price is 16,000 US dollars, which is less than 20,000 US dollars. So this constraint is met. Mileage is 35 miles per gallon, which is more than 30 miles per gallon. So this also is met. So this meets our criteria of the constraints. Civic, price is 16,000 US dollars, which meets the first constraint. Mileage is 32 miles per gallon. This also meets the second constraint. So this car also meets both the constraints. So these two cars do not meet the constraints while these two cars meet the constraint. So this is our feasible solution. And in this feasible solution, we have two cars. One is Corolla and one is Civic. However, our objective is to maximize the value. So we have to optimize the value that we get out of the car that we are purchasing. So now between these two cars, let's find out which one gives the maximum value. So Corolla has a price of 16,000 US dollars. Civic also has a price of 16,000 US dollars. So price wise both are fine. Mileage wise, Corolla gives a mileage of 35 miles per gallon, whereas Civic gives a mileage of 32 miles per gallon. So definitely Corolla gives a better mileage and has a better value than Civic. So this car becomes our optimal solution. So with this understanding, let us look at the definitions of a feasible solution and optimal solution so a feasible solution is a set of values 
of the decision variables which satisfies all the constraints and non-negativity restriction. Non-negativity restriction means that none of the variables, none of the decision variables can be less than zero. It has to be zero or more than zero. We'll talk about non-negativity restrictions in a later video. So feasible solution is a set of values of the decision variables which satisfy all the constraints and non negativity restriction now let's look at the definition of an optimal solution so a feasible solution so of course the optimal solution will be a solution which is one of the feasible solutions. Like in this example, we had two cars which were the feasible solutions. However, the optimal solution was one of them. So a feasible solution which optimizes the objective function is called an optimal solution. So our objective function in this example that we saw was to maximize the value. So a feasible solution which optimizes the objective function is called an optimal solution.